Hello everyone. So welcome to the Monday interactive session. So today I'm going. This is going to be a short video. So I'm going to talk about uh, our quiz three. Okay. So let's get started. So so quiz quiz three is about convolution and um, use the impulse res uh, impulse system response to determine the system properties. Okay. Let's see the first one. So the first one is to compute. Uh, h of t convolutes h of t and h is given by this, right? So now we should um, be very familiar with this function. So if we write as ut minus ut minus 3, so it's going to be a uh, rectangle function, right? So here's 0, here's 3, here's t, here's 1, okay? So so I'm not going to be very careful about the boundary point, but you know, it doesn't matter the value of the boundary point when we're doing the integral, right? Okay, great. So, so let's recall that yt equals to ht, common loose ht, so that is going to be the integral of ht minus tau, h tau, Theta. Okay, so what we're going to do is again the first step is to flip h, right? So we can have something like this here's negative 3, 1, 0, here's h negative tau, and tau again. So this corresponding to the point where t is 0, right? So now we're gonna change t from the negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So in this case, we have three possible, uh, that's four possible cases, right? The first case is like this. So this is our h of t, and again, so let's use another color to draw this. So here is t, here is t minus 3, right, so that is our h t minus tau. <coughs> okay, and this corresponding to uh, the point where t is less than 0, okay, clearly in this case yt equals to 0 because there's no any overlap between the red part and the blue part, right? Okay, and the second case is that so it should, here should be h tau, right? Or h t 0, 3 and uh, so let's say we have something like that and again, here is t, here is t minus 3, and this is our h t minus tau. And in this case, you can see that there is some overlap here. So the integral uh, limit would be from 0 to t, right? And uh, inside, we have 1 multiplied 1, right? Because so both of them has the magnitude of 1. And uh, d tau. Okay, so this will be t, right? And in this case, so that is a range where 0 is less than or equal to t and less than 3, right? Because when t is 3, so these two guys will be completely overlapped, right? And uh, the next case is... something like this something like that, right? again here's t here's t minus 3 and uh, in this case so our integral limit would be from this point to this point, right? something like that so t minus 3 uh, t o 3, so let's mark here well, this point is 3, not tau okay? And uh, 1 times 1, d tau, and that is t 
evaluate at this point that will be uh, I'm sorry here's tau that will be 6 minus t right and uh, this <coughs> correspondingly this is a range where t is less than 3 less or equal to 3 and less than right the boundary point is where t minus 3 equals to 3 right so that is 6 and uh, the last case is this one So we're going to have something like that, so this is our h t minus tau, tau, and here's t minus 3, here's t. So in this case, clearly, there's no uh, any overlap between these two signals, therefore, our output equals to 0. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Okay, therefore, uh, in summary, so yt will equal to... Uh, let's say zero when t is less than zero or so the last case right last case is where t is bigger than six t is bigger than six and it's t when zero less than equal to t and less than three and six minus t when three is bigger than or equal to t and less than six here okay great so in this case if I want to draw y so it will be a triangle right remember that so this is because that the width of these two signals are identical right if we have two identical uh, width uh, rectangle signal that come loose together we're going to have a rectangle so if the weight is not the same then we're going to have a trapezoid right so this is y t here it is 3 okay very good so this is the solution of the first one hopefully now everybody understands how to compute a convolution integral okay next so next one is just to uh, test you how to compute a convolution if we have a delta function here so clearly remember that delta function so for delta function we have a so we know that the delta t is a convolution identity we have this formula holds right so now if we shift delta by one unit then the output will be shift by one unit again so this is the property of the convolution delay property of the convolution and now if we want to do a scale scaling here so it's just gonna be a scaling in front okay so that'll be the final result and uh, if I'll sketch it so we know that this is our HT right now we just sh uh, shift this guy to the right of our unit okay and uh, so the, the 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 amplitude here would be three right because before it's one and now since we're drawing the signal only let's be more careful about the boundary point so here's one at this point and at this point here should be zero Okay, so this is what we got for the second problem, right? So now let's see the next one. So the next one is for the discrete time signal system. And uh, the first one is to, again, sketch uh, HN convolutes HN. So, so you know now our HN is pretty easy. So it's just 2 delta N plus 3 delta N minus 1, right? So we can draw our HN as follows so at n at 0 so we have a 2 right and uh, at 1 we have a 3 and at other point it's going to be 0 right okay great 
So, so now for this kind of problem, it is the easiest, the easiest way to do it is just to compute it, um, compute the value one by one according to each n, right? So let's write down the definition of it. So this equals to this h make the n minus n h n. Okay, so again, the first step is to flip our hn to get our h negative n, and uh, that will be the case. The two, so on. Here's one, two, three, and so on, right? So now, so we can see that. So again, we're gonna draw this case by case, right? So for the relative location of these two signals, so we're gonna have the following cases, right? For the first case, zero have one. So I don't draw the zero point, you know what I mean, right? So this is our H N. Okay. And uh, now we can draw our Oh, sorry. Draw our h negative m. If h negative m is here, h uh, uh, n minus m. But in this case, the output would be zero, right? So y n would be zero. So that's the case where. Again, remember that. So this location basically corresponding to the case where n equals to zero, right? And if we want to make sure that these two signals are not overlapped at all, we need to make sure that. So here is n equal to zero. So in this case would be n less than zero, right? Because we can draw here. Here is n, and here is n minus one, right? Okay, great. So the next. case is that H N. the next next case is that they, they just touch each other right so that will be something like this if you want so this is h n minus n okay and this is nothing but n is 0, right? When n is 0, it's clear that in this case, yn is 2 times 2 equals to 4, okay? Because here the value is 2, right? The next case is that, so we're going to shift this signal to the right by one unit, where is the case that n equals to 1. So in that case, this is what we're going to get, right? Here is Hn and uh, here is so the red part is Hn minus n where n is 1, right? So in this case okay, 0, 1 so Yn will be equals to what? This 2 multiplied 3 plus 3 multiplied, uh, multiplied 2, right? Equals to 2 multiplied 3 plus 3 multiplied 2, that equals to 12, right? Okay, great. And the uh, next one will be something like this. Zero one, okay, and uh, okay. So this is our H n, H n minus n uh, will be something like this, right? 
Okay, again, now the overlap is only this point. Okay, so this is H minus M. Okay, so YN will be nothing but 3 times 3, that is 9. And here's N is 2, right? And uh, after that, so we're going to see the next case would be something like they don't have any overlap, right? Next is something like this. Let me use the right color. Right, this is RH and minus M. Okay, in this case, YN is zero. That is, N is bigger than, or bigger than two, or bigger than, or equal to three. Right, and similarly, we can write the first case as N is less than or equal to negative one. Okay, therefore, YN is four when n is zero, uh, twelve when n is one, nine when n is two, and zero otherwise. Okay. And uh, if you want to sketch it, it will be something like this. Right, so we have 4 when n is 0, and uh, 12 when n is 1, and 9 when n is 2. Okay, and uh, at all other points, it's going to be 0. Okay, so that would be the answer for this question. Okay, great. So next one, let's see. So whether HN is memoryless or not, right? So clearly HN, so in this case, HN doesn't equal to some constant multiplying delta N, right? Therefore, of course, we need to make sure that delta alpha uh, it's not zero, okay. And in this case, clearly HN is not in this form, so this is not memoryless, right? Not memoryless. Okay, great. Next one is whether HN is causal or not, and the definition of causal is that. HN, I mean, the definition of cause in terms of the unit impulse response is HN equal to zero when N is less than zero. Right? Clearly, that is the case, right? So, yes, it is causal. And um, the last one is whether HN is people stable or not. And to determine whether a system is people stable, we just need to make sure that whether H of N is absolutely summable. Okay, so we know HN on equals to this guy plus that guy, right? So therefore, this is equals to 2 plus 3, that is 5. Clearly, that is less than infinity, therefore, it is, yes, it is Bebo stable. Okay, great. So that's a very brief um, test of our understanding of the LTS systems. Okay. So please let me know if you have any question on that. So we're just going to end here. And in our next Monday interactive session, I'm going to discuss uh, our homework five. Okay. So uh, please stay safe and healthy. So I'll see you next time. See you. Bye.